Welcome to the Truth and Liberty broadcast. We believe we have a mandate to bring godly change to our nation and the world through the seven spheres or mountains of influence. To further this cause, we give away a product every week that will empower you to get involved in changing your life and changing our world. You can register for our weekly giveaway by subscribing at truthandliberty.net. You can also subscribe to our newsletter to receive weekly updates on guests, news, and much more. This is an interactive live cast, and we welcome your questions. To ask a question during the live cast, use the comment or chat features. Now get ready to dive into this week's topics with our hosts on location in Colorado, USA. Hello and welcome to the Truth and Liberty live cast. My name is Mark Cowart, sitting in for Andrew Womack tonight, and we have a very special guest. Um, this is really special to my heart. We have with us Ben Peterson, who is an eight-year U.S. Army veteran. He spent two years in Iraq, and uh, Ben is someone that knows the trauma of war, and something that I think our country has to wake up to is the value that our veterans are and that we need to honor them. And there's so much going on, but I'm so excited uh, because of an event coming up that he is going to be a part of. It could well be the largest of its kind. And we're going to give Ben a more proper introduction in just a moment. But Ben, I want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, sir. This is, uh, this is awesome to have you. Powerful things are happening. Before we get to your story, uh, Richard, you've got some announcements and things to share with us. Absolutely. So if you could do that. All right. Thanks, Mark. It's great to be with you. Great to be with Ben. And uh, great to be with all of you guys tonight. Thanks for watching Truth and Liberty. This is going to be a really awesome show. I mean, sometimes you just know you can feel the spirit in it. And I know based on what we were doing before the show tonight and our conversations, this is going to be one for the books. So tell your family and friends about tonight. Hey, listen, if you're watching on YouTube tonight, uh, well, you're not. Uh, stop watching on YouTube and get over to our website <laughs> and watch there where you're going to have a, re a reliable viewing experience. And YouTube is uh, censoring us again. Uh, they're reaching back into our archives and canceling videos. So uh, be sure to watch straight on truthandliberty.net and you won't get censored. So, And while you're there, check out our, our resources page. We literally have hundreds of tools there designed to equip you, to educate you, and to uh, make you able to stand for truth in the public square. A couple of the recent ones that we've got, uh, Andrew just published a blog called The End of Row May Be Near, but there's still work to be done. And every Christian in America needs to read Andrew's blog. I promise you that because this is a great victory that's on the horizon, but it, the war is far from over. Also, Billy Epperhart, the CEO of Andrew Womack Ministries, published a recent blog that we're carrying on Truth and Liberty about the economic times that we're in and the, and the possibility of a recession and how we need to prepare ourselves. Those and many other resources are available to you. Lots of events coming up here at Andrew Womack Ministries, as always. And uh, this week, Andrew is in Washington, D.C. for the Washington, D.C. Gospel Truth Conference, May 19th through the 21st. Go on our website or uh, the AWM website, awmi.net slash events, and you can probably still register for that and, uh, and make that event. It's going to be awesome. He's going to be ministering along with Tony Cook, a great uh, Bible teacher. Um, and so if you can make it, you need to do that. Coming up June 10th through the 11th, Awakening 2022, Andrew will be ministering in Fayetteville, Georgia, along with Mario Murillo, E.W. Jackson, and, uh, and others there. It's going to be an awesome time. So check that out on our website, awmi.net slash events. And uh, July 4th, it's time to make your plans for July 4th and the annual Summer Fi Family Bible Conference here at Karis Bible College. The In God We Trust musical, uh, you hear me talk about it all the time. I love that show. My good friend Adam Stone was the original author of that, and it is uh, an amazing event. It will remind you why you are thankful to be an American mm -hmm. and uh, restoring America's true God, godly heritage. And so come out and join us for that and for the Summer Family Bible Conference, and you'll be glad, glad that you did. Are you a subscriber to Truth and Liberty? If you're not, you need to be. I know, like everybody else, your inbox is getting spammed and filled up all the time. But, I, but you know, I really believe that the resources we're sending out, the information is valuable stuff. And uh, subscribe today, and you'll begin receiving those blogs, those emails, and those updates, those action alerts, what you need to stand for Christ in the, in the public square. When you do, uh, we will send you, or we will put your name in the hat. You'll be eligible to receive uh, a free product 
uh, and so last week, I want to congratulate Quentin Deerian. Quentin, you won Andrew's book, More Grace, More Favor. So you'll be getting an email about how you can claim that gift. And uh, this week's product is Andrew's book, uh, Discovering the Keys to Staying Full of God. This is based on Romans chapter 1, like Andrew does. He takes a passage of the Bible we've all heard and breaks it down. And you never heard anybody teach it the way he teaches it. This is awesome. It literally can change your life. So subscribe today and be able to receive that. Are you a member of Truth and Liberty? I want to invite you to consider that. We are, God is doing amazing things through us here. I'm telling you what, we're, Truth, uh, Truth and Liberty is transforming Colorado along with many of our strategic partners. And if you want to be a part of supporting that, you can go on our website today to the donate page, sign up to be a member. All you have to do is a recurring contribution, automatic gift of $5 or more per month, and you'll become a Truth and Liberty member. And when you do, we'll send you a copy of uh, this pamphlet here where it contains the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of the United States, and a copy of Andrew's Declaration of Dependence Upon God, a pocket uh, copy of the Declaration of the Constitution, you ought to have it right there with your Bible, carry it with you everywhere you go, and be equipped to be a godly citizen. So um, last thing tonight, uh, if you need prayer tonight, uh, we have trained, spirit-filled, Word of God trained prayer ministers standing by 24-7 to take your call and agree with you in prayer. Just call in at 719-635-1111, and someone will agree with you in prayer. All right, well, we're excited to get to our guest tonight, Ben Peterson and Pastor Mark Cowart. Thank you, Richard. I tell you, Richard, you know, and Ben, Ben, it's good to have you. I think our here. veterans uh, very much overlooked in this country. Uh, we owe a great deal to them. Amen. And uh, something that I've been aware of in times past, the suicide rates. Mm -hmm. uh, in the realm of unbelievable, yeah. um, you served uh, the United States um, by serving in um, Iraq two years. Yeah. And uh, so you experienced some trauma. And that's one of the things that, that we find with our soldiers, this uh, PTSD, yes, post-trauma. And um, so when you came home, it, it, in my notes as I was reading over, it gave you a feeling of vulnerability coming back. And so I like for our listening audience to hear your story. Tell us yeah. what that was like and uh, any the encounters you had with the Lord. Totally. And uh, then we'll get into some powerful things yeah. that are happening in the country here. Yeah, well, first of all, it's, it's an honor to be here. Um, I've been following Andrew Womack's ministry and y'all for uh, a long time. I, think, I like that, y'all. Yeah, well, you know, I'm living in Nashville. I'm nine months in, so I got to kind of brush up. But I, one, of, one of my favorite things Andrew Womack said that I, I took to the bank was, if you want uh, to steal $20 from my wallet, I'll fight you for it. But if you, if you come and ask me for it, I'll give you my whole wallet. And I was like, when I heard that, I was like, that's a dude I can follow. You know, that's, that's, that's a strong man right there. Um, so, yeah, guys, it's an honor to be here. Um, Served in Iraq 08, 09, and on the sixth day of my tour, uh, seven of my soldiers were killed um, in a helicopter that went down. And um, that was a, an extremely traumatic experience because um, we were a combat aviation brigade. So basically during that year, um, we would fly, you know, taxi cab rides in between bases. Um, we do medevacs for anyone who got hit on the ground. We go and pick up, you know, anyone who was hurt. And then um, we do gunship missions, which, which we always joke about. The, the guys on the ground that couldn't handle what they run into, then they called us, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but uh, one of our birds was coming up um, as we were making the initial push uh, into uh, uh, Camp Anaconda, which is where we were gonna be for the year. And um, they went down, seven of our guys were killed. And one of the gentlemen that was on that bird, um, his name was Anthony Mason. And um, he actually wasn't supposed to be on that chalk that night. Uh, one of our other sergeants um, had been flying every night in the train up in Kuwait, and um, Anthony looked at the duty roster, and he went and he said, hey, you get some sleep tonight, I'll take your place. Mm. Mm. And that's where, I mean, you, you, you learn the meaning of the word, there's no greater love than to lay down your life for a friend. Mm. Um, and so, you know, you uh, basically are you're in that situation, and I, I was a chaplain's assistant in the military, so my job was to keep the chaplain alive at all costs as we're moving throughout the country. I'm his infantry bodyguard, because chaplains don't carry weapons. Um, and then I was his ministry assistant. So, you know, um, my chaplain in, in 24 hours 
after that took place, before we did the memorial service, I mean, he counseled like 80 soldiers, mm -hmm. one after, I mean, all night, one after mm -hmm. another, after another, after another. And then we did the memorial service, and then the next day it was like it never even happened. Um, and, and so you have all that pain, and you have all that, and you shove it down, because now there's a mission to do. Um, and so that really, you know, started the process. And then one other experience I'll tell you about, um, we had a, uh, a suicide bomber who blew up a school outside of our base. So that was a Shiite Sunni thing. Um, blows up the school, kills about 30 kids, wounds another 40, 50. And um, our guys went in and, and saved the rest of those kids. And I was in the hospital after they brought them in. And when you see a child um, that has been decimated by a bomb, um, it, it is not the Patriot. It is not we were soldiers. You know what I'm saying? It's not a movie. And it cuts you deep um, so take to take a long story short I came home and it was about 22 23 days after I came home I started um, having nightmares and tremors that I was doing horrible things to children and I like I got saved when I was 17 I got filled with the Holy Spirit when I was 20 I mean when I was 20 years old before I went to Iraq I'd be out on the streets preaching the gospel wow. praying laying hands on people seeing miracles like like on fire for Jesus yeah. right so then I come home and I'm having all of this trauma and there's all this shame associated with it. And so then, you know, I was young, I was broken and I ran to the bars. I ran to fill that hole. So now I'm a spirit filled Jesus lover that's having all this trauma and now I'm getting drunk and I'm partying to try to heal my pain. You want to talk about a whirlwind of shame. Mm -hmm. That is, that is, uh, how things really started spiraling out of control. For me. And, and so you spent two years in Iraq? Yeah. And let me ask you, I'm curious, what does, what does the Army do in ministering? Because, you know, everybody that's going to be on that battlefield, um, you know, because as a pastor, one of the things, and it's funny, I was actually talking about this in the office today about trauma, mm -hmm. because I said, you know, you don't have to go overseas into battle to have trauma. Sure. You can, you know, people experience trauma and it alters their life mm -hmm. for the rest of their life yes, sir. until someone, you know, till there's ministry. Is the Army, is our armed forces doing anything to help our soldiers process through those things? You know, I... Back in 2008, 2009, um, you came home, you talked to a doc. If you didn't want to talk about it, you didn't have to, and it was over. And wow. you were back to life, right? Wow. Things have changed over the last, you know, uh, 11 years, 11, 12 years, where there's more resources, there's more opportunities. The problem is, if you're staying in the military, and I got out, you know, after I, I went to combat, um, if you stay in the military and you start having problems and you become a head case, you are, you're blacklisted mm. and you are, you know, kind of seen as a problem child. And so it's not encouraged to go get help. You just need wow. to soldier through it. Um, and I think that's where you're seeing a lot of problems. So what did you do and how are you doing now? How yeah. did you do that? You know, one thing I found is that when you have a traumatic event, yep. Um, I started studying about sleep and stuff, and I found out, you know, I used to think when we'd go to bed at night, it, the switch goes off, everything shuts down. <laughs> but that's when everything gets processed, starts, and yep. it's like you're putting 220 volts, yeah. you know, and maybe an iPhone or something like that, and you're yeah. frying circuits in your brain. It's literally out of the realm of being able to really process through it. Yep. But what did you do, and how are you doing that? Well, um, you know, going back to my story, I was spiraling out of control. And when you have tasted of the goodness of God and filled with his spirit and you run back to, uh, you know, the trash, mm -hmm. it doesn't fill your cup very, very long. You know what I'm saying? And so I was in sin for not, I mean, maybe a month of just a brokenness. And I started spiraling so fast. And I, I got home one night after bar closed. It was about three o'clock in the morning and I had a handgun. And um, I didn't want to die, but I didn't want to live. Mm. Because one, I knew the, I know now the devil was trying to kill me, yep. right? Yep. Straight up, steal, kill, and destroy. Um, and there's nothing the devil hates more than a pissed off, spirit-filled vet out wanting to do some damage <laughs> for the kingdom, amen? <laughs> but, uh, but when going back to that moment, like 
man, um, I was spiraling out of control, and I, I was, I was in, in a very dangerous place. And um, I called my mentor. His name is Scott Erickson. An incredible man of God, such a blessing to have him and walk through things with. And he picked up the phone at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I was just in a puddle of tears, and I was just choking out, like, why? You know, like, why is this happening? Uh -huh. And he said to me something that has, has set up the rest of my life. Um, he said, Ben, when the disciples lost Jesus, it was the most devastating moment of their lives. And I got really mad at him because I didn't want a Bible lesson, you know. <laughs> but I stuck in there. <laughs> and, and he said, um, you know, the disciples wanted a King David to come up and set up shop. And they were like the guys that were in, right? They were in with Jesus. So they wanted the, the power, the prestige. I mean, the sons of thunder, right? <laughs> And he goes, and in their eyes, like a coward, he dies on a cross. And so in that place between the death and the resurrection, Scott said, that's where you are. Mm. You're in the space where you can't see the victory that Jesus has over your life. But it's the greatest victory the world has ever known, mm. and that's dying mm. for our sins. Wow. That's and awesome. and he yeah. said, and I'm trying not to lose it, he said, there's a resurrection day coming for your life. Mm -hmm. And he said, Ben, if you'll just trust him, if you'll put your faith in him, I know how hard this is, but he's going to use you. And man, I'll tell you what, and I, th I think this is like what I want like listeners to hear, man, mm -hmm. it did not get easier, mm -hmm. but I had hope. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something we need in this hour is that elements are not going to get easier, but we have to have hope. And so, man, I started, I started working through it and I started going back to Bible study. And it's been a very, you know, this is a very loaded question of like mental health and all those things. You know, um, I went deep into like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go rock solid into my faith. And there was so much work that Jesus and, you know, Kairos Ministries and all those things did. But there also came a point where I needed to do some mental health therapy and I needed to do some trauma counseling. Mm. Um, and uh, there was a portion where I needed some, some help with medication to help with my massive mood swings to regulate things a little bit. And I, man, that was such a shameful thing for me mm. because when you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost and you've seen bodies healed and you're like, man, God can heal and he can do and that doesn't yeah. change anything. Yeah. But I got to a point where I was like, man, I, I need help. Mm. And it, with a marriage, with a young baby, with, with a demanding ministry, getting some help in, in that medication area was a real game changer for me. Wow. You so. know, and I'm a pragmatist and I appreciate that. I'm like, let's win this fight, mm -hmm. okay and uh, whatever has to happen there. I've got friends that I love, they're in heaven way too early because they didn't want to take medicine, you know, yeah. to maybe control their blood pressure sure. or their, you know, blood sugar. And it's like, praise God, we keep the heavens wide open for God's healing power. Yep. But while we're sitting here talking, I just cannot help but think of how many millions of our combat vets right now are still carrying things that are locked away in a closet. Oh. 100%. And, and process. Um, now, we've got some pictures to look at. Yeah. And uh, Richard, do you well, thought we ought to look at some of those? And yeah, that would be that would be awesome. I want to make sure people know all about his uh, Engage. What, what's it called, Ben? Engage your Engage destiny. destiny. Yeah, and, and we've got a video that's going to share a promotional. It's a promotional for an event that's going to happen. Yep. And some powerful things are happening. So yeah. we're excited about that. But can you share with us in some of these pictures here what we're going to be seeing? Well, yeah, I mean, we can kind of share with you the resurrection, right? So uh, in 2016, God called me to leave the, the business world and to start Engage Your Destiny, which is a ministry to engage with military veterans and their families so we can lead them into their destiny. And God opened doors for us to get on bases. Wow. And we have seen thousands and thousands of soldiers give their lives to Christ um, on base and then get plugged into crew military Bible studies as well as several other programs. Um, and that, that's really what Engage Your Destiny is. It's, it's an engage ministry. We, we engage with the world and we are always trying to figure out how do we get into the world and gain favor so that people will listen to what we have to say, uh -huh. specifically with military vets and their families. Um, so we had a very, very fruitful on-base ministry, which is now just starting to uh, be revived again after COVID. Um, so COVID hit and then we went online and um, we were creating chapel services for chaplains because they were asked to do 12 to 14 services a day because they had to do them in small groups. And we were like, man, what if we made y'all like, you know, some chapel services that are videos? Uh -huh. And that just went awesome. So we had 
during COVID, we had rangers in Afghanistan watching our shows wow. every week getting ministered to. So there's no telling of the 250,000 device views we had, because you'd have 100 guys watching the device. We have no, we could never measure how many came to Christ, the impact of that, so and all that. So were those pictures stateside or overseas? Those are stateside. Yep. Okay, and then you're saying that they broadcast that overseas. Yep. Oh my during, God. During during COVID, awesome. when everything shut down. Wow. Yeah. So that, wow. that's how we survived and pivoted through COVID. Now, are you seeing some of these soldiers? I mean, obviously, there's some Christians there, but are you seeing soldiers come to know the Lord? Um, so the on base, I mean, we've been pretty focused on our big event, which we'll talk about. Um, but the doors are opening to get back on base, which we're we're really excited about. And we're going to wrap up this this big event, and then we're gonna we're gonna get back on base. So that'll be exciting. Wow! Awesome. Yeah. Wow! Yeah. Well, you know something that uh, because you know. Some very dear members of CFAN, you know, Vietnam veterans. My dad was a World War II vet. And then, you know, the Vietnam thing, I was, I was kind of small when that yeah. was going on. My brother came about that close and then things about started winding down. But their return home was horrific. Tragic. Um, shameful. Shameful. Yeah. Um, and there's something going on. Wow, that you have going on in Daytona Beach. Yeah. Tell us about this, um, and then we'll roll a video to talk about that. Yeah, well, the, the way this came to be, you know, people ask me, how'd you come up with this? And I'm like, well, I didn't. God <laughs> did, so this is all his idea. He gets all the credit. Um, but I was at home in 2016, and this was a few months after I'd started Engage Your Destiny. And I was walking through the living room. My dad was dying of cancer at the time. I had just taken him in for a cancer treatment. Um, and... I was passing through the living room, and there's no other way to say it, but I, I had an open vision. And um, I, I've never seen anything before. You know, I've seen God do amazing things and all that, but this was a, this was a vision. And I saw this massive stadium that was filled with tens of thousands of veterans, Vietnam veterans. And they were surrounded by young people and family members, um, younger veterans, and, and, and then it zoomed in on this one Vietnam veteran and this is all in like 10 seconds, right? Yeah. And this one Vietnam vet had just tears streaming down his face because he was being honored. He was being welcomed home. And wow. I, I felt the tremendous presence of Jesus, probably cried a little bit. And then I, I sat down and I remember just like, you know where it takes you like five minutes to sit down? You know, because you're just, <laughs> you're, you know. And, and I sat there and I just dreamed. And I remember I grabbed uh, a notebook and I started just penciling out things. And, and, and the reason that's so impactful is because when I came home from Iraq, protesters had started showing up at Iraq yeah. veteran funerals. And many yeah. of us have forgotten, but over a hundred funerals were protested. Yeah. So you have Code pink and all them. So yeah. you have family members that are mourning the death of their son from combat and people are there shaming them. Mm -hmm. And virtually overnight, the Vietnam veterans rose up mm. and said, never again. Mm. And they started showing up at all the funerals and all the welcome homes of Afghanistan and Iraq veterans. So I get off the bus in 2009, and the first thing that I see is 100 Vietnam veterans lined up, shoulder to shoulder, American flag, and they're guarding my welcome home. Oh my gosh. Wow. And, and I mean, this, this, this is not a vision, like this happened. That happened and yeah. so I'm about, in, in the military, we were so big on like ceremony and meaning, and like I walk forward and I'm looking into the eyes of men that were called baby killers, that were um, screamed at, Spit we we've on. spit on. We've had stories of Vietnam veterans that had buckets of blood thrown on them when they walked off the bus. God. People getting punched in the face, like like true shame, and um, people not wanting to sit next to them at the airport. Them getting home and no one asking them how they're doing or I'm glad you made it home. And and they took that message and said, I'm not welcome here. No one's going to know I'm a veteran. And 90 plus percent of the veterans I talked to for 30 to 50 years never told a soul they were a vet. Wow. And that's shame. And so I'm looking into those guys' eyes as I pass through them to get to my family. Mm. And so as I'm sitting on that couch, man, I'm, I'm thinking about my experience and what these guys have done for me. And I'm like, man, God has a plan here mm -hmm. and he has a purpose. Wow. Yeah. And it took a few years to build the ministry um, and then COVID hit. And uh, we decided it was time uh, during a pandemic when no one was doing big events to do the biggest event we could. We could <laughs> Why not? Sounds like God. Yep. Why not? So it's called Heroes Honor Festival. And when's it going to be? How Day can people learn more about it? Yeah. Daytona Beach, Florida, Memorial Day weekend, May 27th and 28th. 
Um, yeah, it's uh, we already have over 20,000 uh, veterans and spouses coming. Am I understanding General Boykin, our friend, is going to speak yeah. Friday night? Friday night. Um, who else was going to? There, there's some big music stars that are going to be there. Yeah, we really wanted to find a way to honor these guys uh, in a way that is going to be relatable. And so um, we reached out to Toby Keith, and he graciously accepted, as well as Justin Moore, uh, Craig Morgan. Um, we we kind of had the heart around this that we wanted to have music music folks that were going to draw people, also those who have earned the right to be there. Mm -hmm. And Toby has played in combat zones countless times. Justin Moore has done several USO tours, and Craig Morgan is a combat veteran. And so those three big country acts, they've earned the right to have that stage. And then um, on Saturday, uh, we'll have um, Medal of Honor recipient uh, General Brady. Um, we will have, uh, as well as Ann Margaret and Chris Noel. Uh, we'll have Mark Oz Geist, who was on the Benghazi security team. Okay. Uh, awesome man of God. Um, and then we'll also, yeah, there's the name, so I don't forget anybody. Oh, nice. um, we have Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North, which we're really excited about. He's an incredible patriot, man of God. Um, and then uh, we'll have, uh, we're really excited to have Governor DeSantis on Saturday. Wow. Um, and he's going to come. Um, Governor DeSantis was uh, with a jet. He was a JAG officer that served with SEAL Team 1. Uh, and so many people have forgotten that. I think some people are upset that we have Governor DeSantis coming and making political. It's like he's a veteran first, and he's the governor of the state. So, yeah, we're going to have and him. And a good yeah, one. It's all right. yeah. <laughs> and um, so, so those are the pieces that are coming together, and it's, it's just going to be um, – we have talked to hundreds of Vietnam veterans, majority of which said, um, I, I waited to register because I actually thought it was too good to be true. Oh, my goodness. Wow, that's awesome. Too so, good to be true. Uh, so, Ben, is there a website where people can go to register to pay, buy tickets? Now, it's free for yeah. Vietnam vets? Yeah, so this is, this is free for all veterans and their spouses. Okay. Um, and the way that we've been able to do that is through our generous donors and from folks buying tickets. Okay. And so when you buy a ticket, you are sponsoring a veteran for this event. Wow. So if we wanted to, we could go to that website and donate just to help defer expenses. Well, I Absolutely. think you'd wanted the, the donations are at a different site or are they on this one here? So if you want to support, um, uh, it all goes the same pot. <laughs> if you want to support our on base. In other words, you'll receive money. Yeah, absolutely. It, it all goes the same spot. If you want to donate, you can go to Engage Your Destiny. If you want to sponsor a Vietnam veteran specifically, you can go to heroeshonorfestival.com. Um, but I think one of the other really key pieces to this, I'm going to, I'm going to give a, a Jesus message on Saturday night that is really centered around uh, legacy and I got a surprise in it, so I can't tell you about it. It's, it's very special that will really relate to only military guys. Um, and, then, and then I'm going to talk about Jesus, and I'm going to talk about being the hands and feet of Jesus to serve these folks. Wow. And um, we have 15 partnering organizations, all that love, serve, and follow Jesus, that we have been working with for quite a while. And they are all a part of the follow-up. So every veteran that attends this event is going to be followed up by Christ-centered organizations to love on them, to serve them, PTSD care, going to ranches, going to wow. experiences, uh, mental health treatment, small group care, discipleship, one-on-one -on -one counseling. I mean, we've got the full suite of services and that band of brother organizations, we are uh, actually uh, endorsed by the Department of Defense. Um, so it's called the... Um, the VSA, the Veteran Service Alliance. And I am so um, excited. I just feel the awesome. presence of God all over the. Now, the <laughs> so video awesome. that we have back here, is that a promotional of yeah. this event? Yeah. I think we ought to. Let's run watch this. that video yeah. real quick. Play the video. Like generations before them, when duty called, they answered. With unflinching bravery with a hero's honor. But when they returned home, they were not met with a welcome. In fact, they were shamed, blamed, and rejected. The ripple effects of this are still felt by the veterans and their families today. And yet, despite the rejection, they still became guardians of honor for all those who served after them. Like true heroes, they never again allowed other warriors to be dishonored. As a nation, we're coming together to celebrate and honor these heroes the way they should have been honored five decades ago at the largest celebration of Vietnam veterans ever assembled to recognize them, to honor them and their families with the truth of their heroism, humanitarianism, courage, and sacrifice. 
to fully and finally welcome them home. Together, we're giving our Vietnam veterans a tribute so meaningful, it will change history. Wow, that is wow. moving. Amen. Mm. And I'm choking it back here. Uh, once again, I'd like to put up the websites. Yeah. How people can get tickets or donate or do something to support this incredible man of God and this incredible work that he's doing there. So, yeah. um, Ben, you know, I, I asked you before the show, I want to make sure it was okay with you if we talk politics just a little bit. Sure. Um, we don't believe in, in uh, that, that pastors ought to be stay out of politics. I, we believe the Bible speaks to every aspect of human life. And I'm just curious, you know, from your experience as a soldier, from your ministry to soldiers, um, what's going on in our country today with yeah. respect to veterans? Are we taking care of them? Is this administration taking care of our vets and our yeah. active duty? And what are you seeing? Well, let's start, uh, let's start with a foundational principle of our nation and what you talked about with, with politics and with freedom and, and fighting for what you believe in, military and all that kind of stuff. I think the greatest mistake that we have made is by straying from the founding fathers where faith, and it wasn't politics, it was your principles, mm. have, have, have become divided. Where we're going to say, I'm going to worship Jesus, I'm going to be a man of faith, but, but I'm not going to get into those politics. Yep. That's dirty. That's what politicians do. And, and that mistake, because if you go back and you study how these men of faith, the founding fathers, were fire-breathing men of God yes, were. that before, even, even before Lexington in, in Concord, George Washington was praying and fasting, mm -hmm. asking the Lord for direction right. in the founding of this nation. And so these are things that, uh, America, you need to be involved. You know, we, we need to be active. And if you take a military person, they, and, and you serve Jesus, you are now a extension of the government. You have given your life to the government. They tell you where to be. They tell you what to do. And if you don't follow it, you go to prison. Mm -hmm. And if you break the rules, you could be, you could be hung. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that, maybe that was back in like 50s, 60s. They don't hang people anymore. Maybe they should. <laughs> Just kidding. But the, but the point is, is that when you become an entity of the government, that is showing that you can be fully invested in the, in the affairs of government and, and have given your life to it and fully serve Christ mm -hmm. because that is what we did in the military. Um, so I, I wanna set that foundational principle. Um, when it comes to serving veterans, I think we, we have never done more. Um, and, and I'll start with um, when it comes to the nonprofits. Right now we have 45,000 nonprofits that exist to um, help sponsor, do things for veterans, right? 45,000. And yet the suicide numbers keep getting worse. And that's where I, I will raise the flag all day long and why we're doing what we're doing. We don't have a program problem, we have an outreach problem. Mm. We don't have a church problem, we have an outreach problem. Mm. We have a problem getting into the world to reach the people. And that's really why God led us to make Heroes Honor the way that it did. I mean, we got some sinners on that stage and we're not afraid of that because we want to reach some sinners, you know? We're going into the world with the Spirit of God so that we can draw these folks in because God's kindness draws people to Him. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to a program uh, state in our country, we truly have some of the most incredible programs for veterans. And if you're a veteran, if you don't want, if you're not getting help, it's because you don't want it. Mm. And I'll say that boldly. There are so many resources, it's crazy. Mm. Now, um, what Donald Trump did just ripped the ceiling off of the VA and the health care benefits for veterans. And what that man did and how he supported the VA with funding and with policies and programs paved the way for the health care that now I'm receiving from the VA that is outstanding. Mm. And I've had nothing but outstanding experiences at the VA. That's awesome. Um, now, our current administration um, is stripping every dollar that they can uh, from the VA as well as from the military. Um, and if, they, if it's money that is not already protected or grandfathered in, they've already taken it. Uh, because they want to put it to their uh, their agendas. 
Um, so I would say right now our active military um, is the least supported that it has ever been. Um, and that's directly from the result of this administration. And do I have time to give you an example? Yes, please. Okay. Um, so right now they have proven, and there was a study that Harvard did in 2019 that said if you have a spiritual core, if you go to a place of worship or a spiritual, you know, doesn't matter what it is, if you go to a place of worship and you actively read a, a spiritual text or you pray on a consistent basis, you are nine times less likely to commit suicide. Nine times. Wow. And, and no one has, served, has, has, has solved this suicide issue because it's a soul issue. Mm -hmm. It is a soul issue of what happens with trauma and the wounds of war. And so right now, the military has taken that information and the chaplain corps was tasked with going across the United States to every single base and training on, you need to develop your spiritual core. And there was an open door for us to go and to do that training and then to follow up with a voluntary opportunity to preach the gospel, which is all those soldiers he raised in their hands, that's how we do it. We come in, secular approach, gain favor, invite them to a voluntary opportunity and we let them have it with the gospel. All those doors closed because Biden's administration cut every dollar wow. for that spiritual training core, which would have been an open door for the gospel and will help eliminate suicide because of the development of the spiritual core. And, and so we've we've all heard um, of the vaccine kind of the struggle with mandatory vaccines in the military mm -hmm. and the refusal of the military leadership to allow conscientious uh, objection to that or, mm -hmm. or men of conscience to say, I don't want to take that because of it's based on research using aborted babies and, and maybe other reasons. What do you know about that struggle? Is that real? Is yeah. that really affecting our our um, men and women? In your well, uh, the Navy SEALs, God bless them. Uh, they took the fight all the way, uh, I think it was to the Supreme Court, and they won. And so the Navy right now, even the, the guy who runs CTN, uh, he serves in the Navy, and he was about to get out. And when I was there with Paul Lodato doing a show, I literally had a conversation with him, and he said they're, they're pulling everything off of the Navy because of the, because of the, of the Navy SEALs pushing back. Mm -hmm. um, now in the Army, um, we have doors opening to go there uh, at Fort Benning, which is the home of the infantry to preach the gospel, where we've done tons of ministry there. There is a chaplain there um, who stood for religious exemptions because that is his job as a chaplain, to stand for a religious exemption. If you, if you, if, if you have the conviction that you don't want to kill somebody or you want a religious exemption for whatever you believe in, that's the job of a chaplain to fight for that individual. Mm -hmm. And so he did not get vaccinated and he stood on the grounds of what chaplains are supposed to do. And right now he's in, he's in what you'd call purgatory. So he's not allowed to take his commission and to do his job, but he's also not out of the military. And so literally he's just sitting there waiting because he took a stand for people to have religious exemption. Mm. So I would say um, the Marines have fought back and there's been more freedom there. Um, the Army and the Air Force are definitely, the Air Force, it's, I mean, you were just talking oh, about that earlier. It's in the news right now. It's in the news right now that- Dozens um, of cadets are about to be kicked out, not allowed to graduate. Not allowed, not allowed to, graduate. to graduate. And they will have to pay for their education they received. Criminal. Up. Communist Just takeover. Tens of thousands. I mean, who knows what that's oh, worth. Oh, who knows right. what that Thousands cost. and thousands. But so. what you're doing right now, so the way that they handle these mandates, um, I, I don't think people realize that the people that are willing to die for this country actually love it, and they're pretty darn conservative. Yeah. And so the <laughs> no, I think they realize. Okay. Well, the people who join the military are typically farm boys <laughs> from small towns, yeah. 70 to 80 percent. Mm. And so right now, recruiting numbers are at a historic low. No one wants to join the military because you've cut off the people that actually want to fight and die for it, all part of the communist takeover in their plan. And then also they have, through these exemptions, you've taken older um, combat veterans that are phenomenal leaders and saying, if you don't get the vaccine, we're going to kick you out. And so they just did an early retirement. And now you've just lost all those patriots, all those God-fearing people because they're not going to get the vaccine. Mm. So... Yeah, it's criminal. It's criminal. Well, what can the average uh, person out there do? Somebody wants to help vets, help help uh, active duty or whatever. They want to stand against this communist takeover, this yeah. purge that's going on. What can they do? Ooh, that's a big question. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, 30 seconds. No, yeah, no, I get it. Something that God has been showing me, and this may be a tad controversial, but I don't care because I have evidence, I have historical evidence to back it up. Um, the founding fathers 
had more miracles take place to found this nation than we can even. I was just reading about the tornado that hit during 1814 when Washington was burning. Mm -hmm. And that tornado hit and the amount of rain that fell extinguished the fires. Mm -hmm. Washington, they said he was the man that couldn't be killed. Mm -hmm. That literally Indian braves would give up shooting at him. The sharpshooters would give up shooting at him because they couldn't take him down. Right. And then the fog that came in at New York and Long Island. And so I, I'm sitting here in the state of our nation and I'm going, the spirit of God empowered the founding fathers to take up arms and to fight, mm -hmm. right? Right. And to fight for what they believe in. And so I fully believe, and, and if, if you want to take a, a stance of peace, you can take that stance of peace, but you also have to acknowledge the people like me that are willing to go into a combat zone and fight and die for your country. Mm -hmm. So are we just going to throw that out the water and say, well, Christians can't fight for anything? Because I did. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I think we have to shift our, our focus here in America of the founding fathers and what they fought for and going, they were willing to fight and die for it and be men of fasting and prayer that relied on the spirit of God, which showed up in miracle form, just like in the book, it, or just like in Exodus, just like through the Bible. Yeah. So I think that's the first thing. And then I think the second thing is that we have to remember that every one of the disciples was brutally murdered for their faith, mm. brutally murdered. And in America, we live a very safe life, and I think we live under a guise of fear because we think that if we stand for anything or if we call out sin or if we have any conviction about anything, it's not loving. Mm -hmm. That is the most anti-Jesus thing that we could possibly do. Mm -hmm. That man stood in front of the Pharisees and said, you're snakes and you're broods of vipers, okay. and he rebuked them for their sin, and he stood for what he believed in, and he pulled out a whip and he whipped people. I mean, the, the understanding that we have of Jesus and the man that he was and how fierce he was while being the most loving and embracing man. Like, that's who we're called to be, the gentle warrior who will fight for what he believes in, but will also be so safe to love. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we got to be more like. And I'm we, loving the fire. This is awesome. Here. We got to stand up and we got to we got to know what the gospels say yeah. and the context of them. And what you said, it's controversial, but it's historical fact. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've said this often that if Hebrews 11, chapter 11, which is called Faith's Hall of Fame. Roger that. If that was not written until the 20th century, some of our founding fathers would have to be included in that. Oh my gosh. And because everything it wrote that they did, subduing kingdoms and out of yeah. weakness were made strong mm. uh, against impossible odds. George Washington actually said, if anybody doesn't believe in God and have faith, they're worse than an infidel yeah. because the hand of God was so prevalent. And the good news is if people get if they get their pulse on everything through the news, what I call the lamestream media, they, it, it's very difficult for them to tell the truth. They have narratives and agendas that they're driving. Just like you said tonight when we open, Richard, we drive everybody we can over to Truth and Liberty uh, instead of YouTube because they're going back in the archives. Who cares? You know, it's a badge of honor in my mind. Yeah, absolutely. They're awesome. censoring us. Yep. And yeah. getting canceled is actually an opportunity for patriots to stand behind you. Absolutely. It's like, go ahead, cancel us, and we're going to get more support. And what is happening, we are in a great awakening right now. Mm -hmm. This country is awakening. Uh, and, and our good friend David and Tim Barton, yeah. Richard and I, we sat with them for hours one night. And they were telling us about the first great awakening and the second. And I stopped them at one point and I said, so what I'm hearing is revival and reformation has three primary components. It's messy, it's divisive, and it's contentious. Wow. And, and, they, and Tim was going, that's it, that's right it. there. So there's upheaval, but it's a good upheaval. Yeah. And what we're seeing happening is we're getting back, I think, to our founding father's original core values and principles. They were men of God. They weren't yeah. just religionists. I think this thing that's going on, Ben, with honoring the veterans touches the deepest part of my heart because men, those men, our soldiers, greater love has no man than that he lay down his life. Yeah. They are a forgotten group of people. Yeah. And it's a, I believe it, uh, it breaks the heart of the Lord that we're letting this happen. Yeah. And uh, so I appreciate so much what you're doing and bringing that honor back because honor is such a big thing with yeah. the Lord. 
And uh, we got to make sure we get some questions in tonight too, Richard. Can I, can I say one more thing? Of course. I, I just want to brag on the Vietnam veteran one okay. more for one second. Yep. Many of them volunteered or they were drafted and didn't run away to um, Canada like cowards. Uh -huh. The Vietnam veteran experienced more days in combat and more fire than World War II, Iraq, and Afghanistan, and that is a historical fact wow. in how much time they spent in direct combat fire. They came home and were shamed absolutely, I mean, pitifully. And then they took the fight to Washington when Agent Orange became a real thing, and they won that fight. Because they won that fight, 9-11 veterans that served in Iraq and Afghanistan, we were subject to burn pits where they burned our garbage 365 every day. I breathed in burnt garbage every day. The Vietnam veterans fought for those rights so that future generations, my generation, will, won't have to fight it. They fought that fight for us. Wow. And then when we were being shamed, they put a stop to it. Mm. These men, if you, if you look at movies that have been made, they shame the Vietnam veteran. They make them look like a drunk, like a, like a baby killer. I mean, Hollywood, they hate these veterans because they were fighting communism. Mm -hmm. And this whole communist takeover fight started back in the 40s and 50s, which is why JFK was assassinated, because he didn't want to go to Vietnam. And so with all of this, the fighting of Vietnam and the way that they were fighting communism, these are some of the greatest patriots that have ever walked the face of this earth, and we can't wait to love on them so amazingly. HeroesHonorFestival.com, you can get your tickets, you can sponsor a veteran. Every ticket purchase sponsors a veteran, and you can be a part of this healing. Wow. And so there's no charge for veterans to come. No charge for veterans. But you can certainly receive donations at the yep. ministry to help underwrite that. And you can buy a ticket and come and be a part of honoring well, yourself. You made me want to come. You know, I know. <laughs> so I just want to say this. If you're watching the show and you're a Vietnam vet, um, or if you know a Vietnam vet, check out this website, do what you have to do to get to this event, or tell your friends, tell your fellow veterans. And Ben, I, I feel like that maybe if, if you could take just a minute and minister yeah. to our veterans who are watching this show tonight, yeah. would you All just veterans. do that? Yeah, man, Holy Spirit, I just thank you right mm. now, Father, for the deliverance of anything that is plaguing your mind, of any way yes. that the enemy has stealed killed or destroyed your family, any infidelity, any addiction issues, I'm calling on you, Holy Spirit, to come into these men and these women's lives, and I pray that by the power of your love, God, that you would wash away all shame and all of the brokenness that would try and lead any of these amazing patriots and lovers of freedom into darkness. And God, I just thank you for your faithfulness and that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And these men of righteous violence are destined for more than they could possibly imagine. And so I prophesy right now in the name of Jesus Christ to your destiny and that you are called to prosper, to impact future generations. You are a warrior for a reason. You are trained for a reason. You have the gifts and the capabilities and the things that you have for an exact reason. And I'm calling to the spirit inside of you, to what God has birthed inside of you, that anything that uh, you thought was meant for evil, that God is turning it for good and that his power is coming into your heart and he's placing hope into your heart right now in the name of Jesus Christ and he's renewing your mind he's renewing your heart and he's going to take that training that discipline all the gifts that you only thought were usable in the military and he's going to activate you into exactly what he's called you to do and so now if you're listening to this and you want to get engaged you want to get connected you want to be a part and you want to have some counseling you want to get into the flow, go to engageyourdestiny.com and contact us and reach out to us. Go to engageyourdestiny.com. We'll be able to connect you to any of our counselors and our advisors, folks that are standing by waiting to talk with you. We are ready and we're ready to love on you. And I declare this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Powerful. Yes. So if, let's say somebody, they really want to go to your event, but yeah. they can't get there. Yep. Is there a way for them to watch it online or is it going to be broadcast in any way? Yeah. Fox Nation has been an incredible sponsor um, and helping us get the word out. And um, they're going to be uh, live streaming the event. So Saturday morning, there'll be a live broadcast that you can check in on Fox and Friends. Uh, and then throughout the afternoon, if you subscribe to Fox Nation, by the way, if you're military uh, or a veteran, you get a free Fox Nation subscription. So you can go ahead and log in for that. Um, and then also uh, you can you can watch the event um, and uh, the schedule is right on the Heroes Honor website. 
you know, I, I feel like I should say this, and, and it's, you guys, you know, Memorial Day for most Americans yeah. has nothing to do with the military. You know, we have barbecues, we cook our hot dogs and our burgers, and we hang out and we watch sports on TV or something like that. Uh, but that's really not what it's about. It's about those men who have paid the ultimate price uh, and women. And uh, this Memorial Day, why don't you do something with your family that makes a difference? Why don't you watch this show? Why don't you share it with veterans that you know? And let's, let's minister God's healing power to these guys that have laid it all on the line for our freedom. Amen. Um, you know, because I've heard people say, and I probably have said it, I don't say it anymore, happy Memorial Day, because mm -hmm. it's not a happy day for a lot of people. Yeah. It's a time to honor and remember those that, uh, you know, paid that ultimate price. Yeah, well, that's right. And uh, I just thank God for what you're doing, Ben. Thanks, Ben. I believe, man, you made me want to come to this thing. Good <laughs> Lord. Um, Tickets are going fast. Go quick. <laughs> well, and I've driven past that speedway. That's a huge place. I would well, love to see. We had God-sized faith, you know. <laughs> swell with uh, attendance. That'd be great. Yeah, so, um, but this is awesome what you're doing. I Thanks, believe sir. God's hand, and I feel the presence of the Lord all over it and all over you. I appreciate the fire in you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Um, Richard, we've gone almost the whole program. Do you think we could get one question or what I, do yeah, you think? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, these questions, a lot of them I think we've already covered, but this person uh, for Christ on chat is asking, has your ministry helped the soldiers resisting vaccine mandates and or seeking re religious exemptions? So I don't know if that's quite your area. But. You know, that's a great question. Um, we haven't been in that fight. Uh -huh. um, when COVID hit, you know, we, we went to the online ministry, which was just how do we get ministry to our troops all over the yeah. world? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, God really spoke to us. I gave you a vision for Vietnam. It's time to go do it. Yeah. And so we've been I mean, this has been two years. It's a $5 million campaign. Like it's taken so much to get here and, and we're there. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, I think there could, that fight could re arise us, uh, later this fall, but I appreciate the question. And, um, we've been, we've been on our, on our own battlefield. And I just want to encourage anybody who, who needs help in that area to check out Matt Staver's yeah. website, lc.org, Liberty cool. Council. They're doing more than anybody I know, uh, to help the military fight those mandatory vaccines. Here's another question. Do you have any thoughts on Pastor Locke's investigation on the Johnson Amendment Act? I don't even know what that is. Does anybody Never heard know of what it. that is? All right, Stacy, well, we'll, uh, we'll try to learn about that. Sarah on Facebook wants to know, are all the Vietnam veterans invited? And I think you've already said that they are. So our neighbor is a Vietnam vet and I wanna make sure they know about it. So um, only the ones that we like. <laughs> <laughs> If you serve from 1950 to 1975, get your butt to this event, period, and bring your spouse. Praise God. Well, so we've got elections coming up, Ben, and this year it's uh, midterm elections in Congress. And, um, you know, I think we haven't heard a lot lately about the, the VA, about veterans. Sure. We heard a lot about it in 2016 when Trump was running. But, you know, we haven't, you know, we pulled out of, we're, we're not fighting ISIS. We pulled out of Afghanistan. It's just not on people's minds. Mm. Is this still a critical issue for people when they're looking at candidates and trying to figure out who, how to vote for? How do they know whether a candidate's going to be good for veterans, good for our military? You know, yeah. can you comment on that? Well, um, if, you're, if you're voting um, for the left, you're voting for communism. So that's just a straight fact. Um, if you're voting that direction, you're voting for the direct destruction of America. Um, and you're not voting for veterans because they literally want to destroy anyone who loves this country and veterans love this country. Um, so their support is nil and, they're, and it's shameful. They're cowards and they're traitors. <laughs> okay. So well, if that offends you, well, you can call these guys. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, um, you know, uh, the other thing I, I think is on my, my heart, and this is totally off topic, okay, but it's, I feel like that, man, you've got an anointing on you, um, almost a prophetic gift. Maybe it is, I don't know. But th uh, there are people that are watching the show tonight and they're wondering what God wants to do with their life. Yeah. And, and I'm listening to your story and how you almost threw it all away and how God resurrected you and delivered you into this amazing calling 
What, what do you have to say about that? What kind of encouragement can you give to anybody who's watching tonight and who's yeah. wondering, well, does God really have a purpose for me? Oh, I love that. Maybe question. I blew it. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm not smart enough, good enough, whatever the case might be. Yeah. Um, what, I, what I'd like to say to you is that there's absolutely nothing special about the three men that are sitting here. Um, God has an anointing on our lives because we said yes to him. And when, when a man or woman decides to say yes to him, no matter where you're at, and if, if you remember the part of my story where I was in the bottom of the pit, and that was the, the death of the Jesus moment, and I couldn't see the victory God had for my life, um, there was a faith and a hope to trust God for the resurrection day, where you're going to understand, I had to understand why I went through what I went through. And if he did that for me, he will do that for you because he loves you and because he's faithful. And I'm getting a picture right now of Jesus, and it's, it's very simple. It's not complicated, but I see him with his hands open. And I think some of you, you, you feel like it, maybe you had a dad or you had someone in your life that their, their arms were crossed or they were always never open to you to love you. And I, I really see the, the Father's heart in Jesus with his hands open to say, saying, come to me. And so as you're watching this, I, I just want you to take it. Maybe you're with people, you need to go be alone. I want you to embrace his love and let his love supernaturally infuse you with the power of hope to have faith again. If we don't have faith, these things aren't going to happen. And that's where I want to call to you and, and, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, call out the faith in your heart to start to believe again in what God can do. And through the power of your testimony, Satan will be defeated. He can do all things through anyone who just says yes. So powerful. Ben, thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. I, I've been inspired and I've been stirred. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just want to say this for those of you all that are watching. Um, I'm sure all of us know veterans and these are available. You can go in and you can forward the link to tonight's program. Um, I know that Ben was talking about tonight. There's so much help available. I want to encourage you, um, and there's the address for Truth and Liberty. Get this link and share it with a veteran. Uh, this could be healing, the beginning of a healing. The other thing, I want to encourage you to go to the website and learn about Ben's ministry um, and learn about all the resources that are available. I can relate. You know, sometimes it's hard to ask for help. But you can go to engageyourdestiny.com, and uh, that's a good start. But uh, be sure to share this link with someone. If you're a veteran that's watching this right now, thank you for your service. God's got a plan. He's not done with you. If you've got breath in your lungs, and we hope we, you can make it to the event on Memorial Day on that weekend in Daytona Beach. And uh, Ben... Thank you again. God bless you. Thank you, gentlemen. For what you're doing. I pray he expands your borders and increases you. And uh, thank you all for joining us. We also want to say thank you to CTN for carrying this broadcast. They're such a blessing to this ministry. We'll look forward to seeing you next week at the same time. Till then, God bless you richly. Join us next time for the Truth and Liberty broadcast. Find tonight's episode and related articles and links at truthandliberty.net. Truth and Liberty is viewer supported. If you'd like to help us continue our live casts, you can make a donation at truthandliberty.net.